I've always been very interested in this idea how we can edit time, you know, differently. And in the beginning of the 90s, when I started to, to, to curate and write, I was inspired by Balzac. I mean, Balzac drank up to 52 coffees a day. That became the first ritual, the first morning ritual, really. I would always order 10 or 20 espressos in a cafe. And that was, you know, the beginning. And uh, it obviously wasn't sustainable at that moment. So I thought maybe another rhythm could function. And I found out that Da Vinci had slept 50 minutes every three hours. So I became very interested in these three hour, 50 minutes rhythm. So three hours awake, 50 minutes sleep, three hours awake, 50 minutes sleep. And so with seven, eight times 50 minutes a day, when he's actually never tired and always fresh. And I wrote my first three or four books all in this, you know, Da Vinci rhythm. It was much, much better than the Balzac rhythm. However, then the problem was that I started to, you know, be a museum curator. And obviously, once one is in an office, you cannot just, after three hours, whenever you need these 50 minutes sleep. So that was the end of that, you know, Da Vinci rhythm. And at a certain moment, um, I started to really never go to bed after midnight and always get up really early. So that was the next uh, experiment with time, and that's what I've done ever since. I think it was Tarkovsky who once said that we live in a time where we don't have many rituals anymore, and because it's uh, a time with lack of rituals, something is missing, we kind of need to invent them. It's kind of almost like a daily practice of inventing rituals. For me, also a very important ritual is, is to buy a book every day. I cannot live without buying a book every day. Minita Calvino wrote this very beautiful book called Città Invisibile, it's Invisible City, um, it's one of my favorite books, and, and, and it's about the fact that you know many things in our cities are not necessarily visible to our eyes or visible to us. There's only a very small part of what we see, and then there's the invisible inhabitants of the park. <laughs>